So okay. it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Viet Paul Lehon from Northwestern University, who will speak about moduli of, of Fontaine 5 modules and mod P local, local global compatibility. Thank you very much for the invitation, the opportunity to speak. So I'll be reporting about a joint work in progress with Daniel Le, Stefano Mora, Choi Park, and Yu Cheng Kwan. So let me start uh, by describing a, the prototype of the phenomena uh, of what my talk is going to be about. So let me start with the, with the classical situation. I have a modular curve written as a double quotient space for GL2 of the adults. So chi infinity is uh, the maximal compact mod center and I put some open compact subgroup UL of GL to ZL for all primes. So the cohomology of the modular curve kind of has a, the modular curve is defined over Q. So the, the periodic et al. cohomology of the modular curve has an action of Galois and it also has an action of the Hecker algebra by all the kind of good Hecker operators for the level. So if I have a, a homomorphism from such a Hecker algebra to QP bar, which whose current is supported on cohomology, it has an associated Galois representation. And in this case, you have a kind of factorization of the L isotopic piece of the cohomology of the molar curve into this kind of tensor product decomposition. And here, the pi L kind of thing is the smooth admissible GL2QL representation attached to kind of the local component of rho at L by the classical local Langlands correspondence. And because I take the level at L, I'm only seeing the UL invariant part in this formula here. So, yeah. So, uh, this is a kind of prototypical sort of uh, what I would mean by local global compatibility because it expresses this homology of some global situation in terms of factors that are kind of defined kind of purely locally. So, these factors are kind of purely locally. They find, depend only on the local component of rho at L and only, well, like it's a purely local construct. So uh, I can make this appearance of this uh, local Langlands correspondent of rho more transparent by kind of shrinking the level at the primes that I like. For example, so here I can shrink UP to kind of the trivial group and take a limit, in which case the invariant part goes away and I'll see the entire GL2QP action here. So, so in this, after I take the limit, uh, on the right hand side, the Galo action gets all pushed to the row factor and the GL2QP uh, part of structure is concentrated on this factor and there's, there's some random junk from the other primes. Okay, so this is what the cohomology of the molar curve looks like in characteristic zero. And it turns out there's a mod P version of this. Sorry, basically you take everything that I said before and replace QP bar by FP bar. So there's still a hacker action and as to any system hacker eigenvalue supported on cohomology, there's still an associated Galois representation. And once again, and this time, uh, this sort of factorization of cohomology of the mod, mod P cohomology of the modular curve is a consequence of the work of uh, Matt Emerton on local global compatibility. So uh, it looks essentially the same as before, except that now the meaning of uh, the local factors are sort of more subtle. Uh, even the factors for L not equal to P are uh, a bit more uh, like um, more tricky, but the most subtle of the factors of all is kind of the factor at P because well, P, there's some kind of resonance with the characteristic of the question field that uh, makes it somehow more complicated. So in this case, pi P rho bar restricted GQP is like the mod P local columnist correspondent of the local component of rho bar restricted to GQP. And so this was sort of, I think first defined by Brawl who just classified smooth admissible, irreducible admissible representation of GL2QP and uh, basically just match it by hand with uh, rho bar restricted with kind of local representation of GQP. Okay, so just as before, I can make the kind of this portion of the structure more transparent by taking a limit as I shrink the level at P. And uh, this object here is commonly referred to as kind of what P completed cohomology is. Well, it's, there's nothing really completed here, but uh, it's so let me stick to this name. Okay, and uh, so, so 
kind of doing this, uh, the structure that you see on what P computer cohomology here is just as before, a GQP action and a GL2 QP action. And so in this way, uh, just as for characteristic zero, you can sort of like see the local Langdon's correspondent of rho bar restricted GQP on this sort of completed cohomology. So what my talk is about is about uh, trying to, to kind of study some aspect of the story when you kind of replace the kind of real 2 QP by more kind of general setup, essentially for some higher rank group. So there are various, there's a certain flexibility in the choice of the global context to do that. So, but let me just stick for a particular technically convenient one. So namely, it's a setup you've seen several times by now in the conference. So I work with a definite unity group of rank N for CM extension. And as I said, there's a certain amount of flexibility in your setup, but the crucial uh, hypothesis I make is that my group, my situation is sort of good at P. So my group, my unit group is going to be split at all places above P and the, uh, the field the group is over is unramified at P. So this is the, essential hypothesis. And I will also fix a tame level, like away from, a, so I fix a V is where I kind of do all my study and I fix a level away from V. And as a, this tame level will not play any role in the rest. So in this situation, I again can form a kind of a dedic quotient space. And this is, uh, in this case, this is just a finite self point. So it's a situation of a zero dimensional similarity because my unit group was definite. So in this situation, uh, the only interesting, well, the only cohomology at all is the H naught. And this is the space of algebraic automorphic form for this group. And just as for the Muller curve, it has an action of the Hecker algebra generated by Hecker operators at good primes, good places. And similar to the Muller curve, if I have a system Hecker eigenvalue that's supported on cohomology, I have an associated Galois representation at n dimensional. But for the kind of, well, if I want it to let into GLN, uh, it's kind of only on defined on the kind of Galo group of the CM field instead of my total real field. Okay, and just as before, I take the limit and I get, uh, I'll define this H tilde zero to be um, the limit as, oops, this always happens. Here we go. So, I take the limit as a string level at V to one, and the resulting object is a smooth admissible representation of the group at V. So my assumption is that it looks like GLN QP to the F. Okay. Oh, by the way, I, uh, I would gladly welcome any questions. So you feel free to type in the chat. I'll keep an eye on the chat. Okay. So the dream is that in analogy with the case of each one of the modular curve, uh, you sh somehow expect that kind of this h tilde zero will see the kind of mod p local Langlands correspondent of kind of rho, rho bar restricted to g f v plus. So unfortunately, uh, at the present kind of we have no almost no idea of what a local a mod p local Langlands correspondence would look like for any group other than GL two QP, and in fact, uh, kind of. Uh, from what I've been saying, like one reasonable uh, way to think about the situation is that because uh, there's no kind of purely local way to attach a smooth emissive representation to uh, a local Galois representation, you can kind of turn things around and try to probe uh, what such a correspondence may look like by studying this kind of global situation. And so for this to be, kind of have any reasonable hope at all, kind of you encounter kind of very basic questions about the situation. So the first thing is that for this to be reasonable, you should expect the structure of H tilde zero as a GL and QP to the F representation to essentially only depend on rho bar V. So this is a question of about kind of the local the locality of. And second, if the mod P local lung score were to be a kind of bijection, then uh, the action of GL and QP to the F on H tilde not must contain enough information to reconstruct rho bar V. So uh, in practice, what you can sort of only kind of start thinking about question two once you kind of know at least something about one. And uh, I'm, but in my talk, I will focus mostly on uh, 
the second part. But let me just mention that the first, uh, the first question is kind of related to the team of this workshop in the sense that the weird part of Shreya's conjecture for my particular global setup is exactly equivalent to a description of the soccer of H tilde zero for my maximal compactness. In this case, GLNZP to the F. Okay, so assuming I, I know kind of a certain amount about question one, kind of how would, what is the difficulty in understanding kind of question two? So the, the, in some sense, the basic difficulty is that uh, local Galois representation for periodic fields kind of have moduli. So let me kind of, wait, where's my pen? Yeah. So for the typical kind of example, is that, so if my row bar V is an extension of two characters, then what are the possibility for its isomorphism classes? So the isoplus are classified by a Galois cohomology group, GQP to the F of, I think it's uh, chi two, but well, there's a 50% chance. So it's classified by the projectivization of this. Well, I guess either you're split and the star is zero, or if you're non-split, then the extension, the isomorphism class of the extension class is classified by kind of a line in H1, G, Q, P to the F. And the basic phenomena is that this space has dimension F usually, but it's always at least dimension F, I guess. And so when F equals one, the situation is very nice. It's unique up to isomorphism extension, non-split non extension. So this is a point, but in any other situation, this is kind of uh, infinite, an infinite set. And so if you start at like just H to the zero as a representation of GL and QP to the F, like the most naive kind of information you can extract are something like Jordan Holder factors or of subgroups and all this sort of thing. But this sort of naive uh, data is kind of discrete in nature. And therefore, there's no hope that kind of by just doing naive representation theory, extracting naive representation theory data, you can extract, like you can pin down rho bar v from its moduli. That's, and so one needs a way to kind of extract continuous, in some sense, continuous parameters out of this representation of a PRD group. Okay, so what is known about this question too? So by known, I mean that kind of in these cases, you know that h tilde zero uh, uh, has you can extract the data of rho bar v from h tilde zero. So there are sort of roughly kind of two sets of kind of results, like which are convenient block for you here. So the first sort of result uh, applies to kind of particular kind of rho bar v. So there's there are neither one Fontella phi of some weight and sufficient generics. So I will just explain what Fontella phi mean later on. Uh, but for now, like a simple working definition you see is that in the case of GQP, neither one just means that rho bar v is an iterative extension of characters. And Fontaine LaFalle essentially, so the QP essentially it's an iterative extension of uh, powers of cyclotomic character. And Fontaine LaFalle is essentially just a situation that the inertial weight are uh, ordered in the right way. So basically the gap between the smallest and the largest inertial weight is kind of less than p minus one. And uh, generic is the condition that the gaps between the inertial weights are not too close to zero mod p. And, oh, and uh, the, this results also impose con generalistic condition on the nature of the extension class. So as you said, there's usually a kind of massive moduli extension. And in some sense, generic just means that you will stay in some sort of risky open in this sort of moduli. So, so this is what the hypothesis mean. The results is that kind of you know that H tilde zero determines the local Galois representation in the following kind of situations when the local group is GL two QP to F. So this is first this is done by Royal Diamond, and it essentially is, its strategy is essentially what gets generalized to all this example in the same block here. So for GL three QP, Herzig Le Mora kind of made it work, and then Enz made it work for general QP to the F, uh, and this was generalized further to by to a Papi and Quirin to GL and QP to QP. However, the result of Papi and Quirin is conditional on some knowledge about uh, the modular share weight. So in other words, some knowledge about the circle of H tilde zero. Uh, and I should mention that this it is now also unconditional, but it can also be made conditional by, uh, yeah. 
uh, also one another thing I want to mention about this set of results is that actually frequently uh, there's another additional hypothesis, namely that you 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 assume to start with that you have this shell weight corresponding to the lowest alkyl weight lambda that you extract from the Fontilla file condition is in the socket. So note that this hypothesis FL inside the socket actually implies automatically that Roba V is Fontilla file. So another way you can uh, state the result is that assume you have F lambda in the socket and then in Roba is some one and generic and then you can extract the data of Roba V from H tilde zero. Uh, conjecturally, this is an if and only if, but uh, we are a bit short from knowing that. And uh, um, and then that's sort of like related result by Le Maurer Pa that deals with the GL three Q peakers in Roba V is not iterative extent of character, but an extension of like one dimension and a two dimension. So that's a level two situation. And then there's a completely set. Uh, there's a completely different method introduced by Scholzer that managed to deal with the size of a GL two K for any kind, even ramified K and any Roba V. And uh, while some aspect of Scholz's work can be generalized to kind of the GLNK situation, it turns out that kind of we are still falling short of actually making it work. It, it work. And in, there's some partial result by Kigang Liu, but it, at the moment, improves severe hypothesis on Robavi. I believe at the moment he needs it to be like irreducible. Okay, so what is our result in this direction? So. We deal with the situation where the local group is GL and QP to the F. And uh, I will do the standard assumption that my kind of lowest arc of weight, F lambda, is in the circle of H tilde zero. And I assume a kind of generalistic kind of condition, but uh, a generalistic condition on like its highest weight. So the gap, it's sort of six n away from the walls. And I will assume some standard Taylor Wiles hypothesis. So the expert will see that anytime you have this hypothesis, it means that somewhere in the proof you are going to patch something. So the conclusion then is that, so first that the set of molar share weights, so this GLNZP to the F circle of H tilde zero, determines the stratum of my Roba V in its moduli. And the second is that, well, after part one, I can now ask whether this stratum is sort of non degenerate in certain sense, and if it's, the answer is yes, then I can write down data that determines the entire, the exactly Roba V inside the stratum from kind of the data of H to the zero as a GL and QP to the F representation. So there's several marks I should be making. So I will explain what the, the notion of stratum means and what modular continuum like five modules I uh, mean shortly. But for now, it suffices to say that whatever notion of moduli of fontaine -Lef file representation you have, the, it essentially contains a well, finite up to an unremitified twist set of semi-simple Roba Vs. And the notion, and you can naturally stratify this by just grouping together all the Roba V in this moduli that has a fixed semi-simplification. And it turns out that we have a stratification, a notion of stratification that's finer than this. So in particular, the stratum is determined, the, the, the stratum determines the semi-simplification. So, so as a consequence of part one, you can, for example, look at H tilde zero and you can detect whether your Roba V was say tame or not. So, and a second is that uh, what, um, uh, oh, yes, yeah, so, but it's a bit unsatisfactory in the sense I, I, at the moment we can only make, make it work if the stratum is sufficient non-degenerate. Um, I should, however, say that there is a non-degenerate stratum for any semi simple equation. And so in some sense, our result will kind of establish, uh, will determine rho bar V from H tilde zero, as long as rho bar is in some sense the most non-degenerate extension of a particular kind. Like for any, so in particular it applies for arbitrary nevo. So, so for example, you could be an extension of uh, characters and then some two dimensional and some three dimensional. And then there's a precise notion of what it means to be the most generic extensions uh, the most non-degenerate extension of this kind, and then our result will apply to this. So in particular, so it means it applies to arbitrarily nivel Roba V. And so for a long time, we thought that this is sort of the best we can do, but as I was preparing for this talk, uh, we actually realized that the example of where our methods failed actually didn't exist at all so far. 
and then uh, over the week I, I wrote a computer program and try and test it for like several hundred stratum and we haven't found a single example where a method fails uh, but on the other hand we have, can't have completely rigorous proof we don't have a rigorous proof that it always works so it's a bit uh, uh, so at the moment we don't actually know if we can remove this non-degenerate hypothesis if i have the time at the end you see that this problem is essentially uh, like a kind of linear algebra kind of issue okay are there any questions about the stateless material okay so let me move on so let me kind of now describe uh so our work fits in the line with kind of the first box so it follows the kind of general strategy that was first initiated by drawing diamond. And so the essence of the strategy is sort of, you can try and capture continuous family of parameters by uh, essentially looking at high operators on H tilde zero. So I'm gonna fix some notation. So I will have, I will let B to be the standard upper triangular borel for GLN, B minus the opposite borel, T is a diagonal torus, and U, U minus the corresponding unipotent radicals. And then let me no note by I, the Ivar Hori for GLN, QP, so F, with respect to B. Okay, so the, 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 so as I said, the, the difficulty in this problem is that there's moduli for bar V, and you need to kind of uh, realize somehow this extension parameters in some way using the GLN, QP, so F action. And the sort of basic mechanism that Royal Diamond kind of initiated was sort of, we just tried to construct a whole lot of high cooperators uh, that whose reduction of P somehow capture particular extension parameters. And then you can see those parameters on cohomology by doing this following kind of representation theory mechanism. So basically uh, you take cohomology and you take a kind of isotopic piece for the Ibahori, and then you have write down and you find another character for the Ibahori, and then the situation is somehow like you can find a group algebra operator for the compact group, two group algebra compact group, and you can write down some two maps. And here pi is in the normalizer of Ibahori, so it's sort of like, so note that the data of S and S prime only knows about the maximal compact subgroup, and pi is the data that it's generally in the periodic group and it's not in the maximal compact. And so the key point is that uh, you can write down somehow two different maps and they are essentially differing by some kind of non-zero scalar. And so this scalar is related to some UP operator. So the presence of UP operator is not so surprising because there's a normalizer of Ivar Hori here that's usually related to UP operator. So, and, and, but I also have to say op UP operator for some tame type, for some uh, tame principal series type. Okay, and so, but for this to work, you have to kind of ar arrange kind of a lot of delicate properties to line up. So what you need for this sort of thing to work is that of course, uh, I can't extract any information if both sides, this, this equality reduces to zero equals zero. So you need non-vanishing basically. And second, to, to have the relation with the UP operator, what you do is you need to be able to lift this equality. So hacker operators are something to live in characteristic zero. So you lift this to some basically, so roughly speaking, you have, you, you have to be able to lift and have get this kind of equality in a valid in suit, suitable principal series representation. And then you need to kind of show that, uh, well, you need to construct enough of them, uh, uh, enough. To kind of cut down and to, to kind of determine all possible extension. Okay, so uh, one of the uh, from a technical point of view, one of the things that makes this complicated to generalize to GLN QP already, uh, or for GL3 QP and so on, is that uh, in this broad diamond strategy, you try to write down explicit operator S and S prime. So uh, that's what people did for GL3 QP and GL3 QP to the F, you know, they write down kind of S in terms of some complicated Jacobi sums and Park and Kuhn managed to kind of do it in some limited case for GL and QP. And so once you write down explicit operators, checking non-vanishing becomes a sort of like delicate problems in modular representation theory. 
essentially, it and this is this is where you need to have some knowledge about the modular share width or the soccer. I mean, the shock is essentially kind of the non vanishing is because if you have enough control of the modular share width, and so 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 this makes it kind of extremely technically complicated if you try to literally write down explicit guess correct operators in very this all these necessary conditions. Okay, so let oh, I move too much. Yes, so uh, what are the main ingredients in for the main theorem that we do? So the first two ingredients is that we introduce kind of a stratification on this moduli of container file models, and we give an interpretation of this stratification in terms of kind of global information. So in terms of the modular share weights. So the soccer of H tilde zero for the maximal compact group. And this is uh, closely related to the kind of uh, thing that Brendan talked about yesterday. It's, in, in fact, we only needed knowledge about the uh, obvious weight in Brendan's talk to do this. So the first two part here kind of deals with the first part of the theorem. So this is the first part of the theorem. And the third part is we have kind of introduced a systematic way to extract sort of normalized hacker operators. And kind of in some, we, we, we will, well, as you see, we'll give kind of, for suitable kind of team types, we will extract kind of a hacker, various hacker functions, where, where various functions on the front end of file moduli that came from this type. And then, uh, the problem essentially becomes the linear algebra from problem, namely you need kind of to show that show that there are a lot of them. There are sufficiently many hacker functions. To separate out. So the first part kind of basically free pins down which stratum you lie in and the the third was well, the first two part does that and then the third part will kind of separate out the robots that occur in the same stratum. Okay. So let me now move on and kind of describe what I mean by the modular fontaine Lafayne module. So a fontaine Lafayne module, uh, it's mod P is a very simple object. It's, uh, let me fix here a finite extension of FP. So fontaine Lafayne module of F is just a projective rank N module over FP to the N tensor with F. So note that this actually is, uh, well, if F is large enough, this decomposes over embeddings of F into F. Oh. It decomposes, it decomposes of embeddings of FP to F to FP bar. And this looks like this. And the second piece of data is uh, decreasing filtration with amplitude less than P minus one. So that means the jumps in the filtration are all concentrated in the interval of length at most by P minus one. And the third piece of structure is that it's, there's a semi-linear, Fabianus semi-linear operator from the associated graded of M to M. And Frobenius acts only on the FP to the F, yeah. Okay. So uh, if F is sufficiently large, uh, you can decompose M according to the action of the FP to the F factor. So you decompose over embeddings of FP to the F into FP bar. And then you can record the filtration jumps uh, on each factor. And this leads to the data of the filtration jump is basically tuples of uh, kind of like integer, decreasing integers. You can order it by interleaving order or increasing, and uh, you get one for each embedding. So, and so this is exactly the data of a uh, uh, highest weight. This is the data of a highest weight of a share weight, which furthermore is in the lowest alcove because I had this condition that the filtration has amplitude less than p minus one. So this is some sort of fairly simple looking linear algebra object or semi-linear algebra object. The point is that to such a gadget, uh, fontaine Lafal define a functor from such things to re representations of uh, GQP to the F. And, in, and kind of you can actually do this with more general coefficients than F. In fact, any Artinian coefficient will work and a represent Galois representation is fontaine Lafal if it's, if and only if it's in the essential image of the functor. So, this is what I mean by a fontaine Lafay representation. So this definition, you can, uh, it's easy to make this definition in families. Namely, you just replace F by uh, 
any algebra over fp. And so you can so get a projective module over such risk with a family of filtration. So family of filtration means that all the associate gradient are projective over R and there's a full linear operator. So it's obvious to make uh, the definition of a modelized space of such. And such a modelized space turns out to be fairly simple. So I claim that, oh, and I should say regular just means that in this, uh, this two perfect integers, and all the inequalities here are strict. So that essentially means all filtration jumps on each uh, kind of embedding is almost one dimensional. Okay, so what is this B is? I claim it is nothing but kind of the affine quotient. So GLN mod D would be the flag by D. If you only mod the uh, uniform radical, I think it's like the quasi affine quotient of GLN. And it looks like F copy of that. And then the quotient out by P to the F by a shifted conjugation. So sh shifted conjugation is that, uh, so if I have a tuple in here, the action of a tuple of diagonal matrix is sort of almost like conjugation, except that there's a shift. This. So the I runs over the embeddings. So why is this so? This is very easy to see. Namely, if I choose a basis for this M that's adapted to the filtration, I can write down the matrix of Frobenius. And so that gives me an element in jail N to the F. So what happens, what are the things I can do to my basis? Because I my basis has to be adapted to filtration. I can only modify it by something in B. If I modify it in, by something in EU, it doesn't change the gr.m piece, but it only changes sort of like, it only acts on the M piece. And that's why uh, it would factor through GLN on EU only on one side. And, but then I still have to consume the res residual T action and the T action when you look at how, how the way phi is defined, it exactly corresponds to shifted conjugation. The shift is because phi is only semi-linear and not linear. And so I have this, this kind of diagram. So, th so that's the explanation of uh, why FL lambda has this description. And, but of course I can just quotient out by just uh, le uh, the uh, well, left translation of the TF action up here and I get the map to the flag variety. So both maps, both diagonal maps here are T to the F torso, so they're smooth. Okay, so with this description, it's clear how you can get various kind of, oh, what's U here? So where's U? Oh, U, as I said before, it's a unipotent radical of the border, yeah. Uh, upper triangular matrices. Okay. So, so now what you can do is that you can just take the, the Schubert stratification of the flag variety. So that's the stratification by decomposing it according to B orbits on GLN mod B. And uh, when you pull it back up here, you get a stratification and this stratification is stable under T, the torus action. And so it descends down to, oops, it descends down to FL lambda. But also you can, you can do the same thing for the translation of the Schubert stratification by any element in the Weyl group. And so in this way, you get like one stratification for each element of W and as a stratification we will work with will be the the causes common refinement of this. So I should warn that I don't actually know that it's a stratification in the traditional sense, that the closure of stratum is union of stratum, but uh, it doesn't matter for our purpose. Uh, so it's more accurate to say that we get a partition of FL lambda based on, by, by just taking repeated intersections of translated Schubert varieties. Okay, and on can show that the locus of Roba V with given semi simplification is a union of stratum. Let me maybe perhaps to help with the orientation, I will just give some examples of this. And in fact, I'll just give the example for F equals one, so for QP. Um, right, so, and it also I prefer to write and to work kind of upstairs in GLN mod EU rather than what the conjugation action. So here, there's an obvious sort of open subpart given by exactly the opposite Borel. So lower triangular matrices. And so I have a fontaine file functor from here to some Roba V. And what do this correspond to? This correspond to exactly the niveau one Roba. So omega I on dot dot dot, omega I n. Omega is a mod P cyclotomic character. And here, lambda is sort of like I on, I n. Okay. 
another kind of locus I have in here, as you can also ask, what are the semi-simple proba? And they correspond to very simple things, so namely monomial matrices. So an element of five group times the torus. And that's again stable under this shifted kind of conjugation action. So this corresponds to semi-simple. And so I should say that, so this B, B minus is exactly the locus of things with semi simplification omega A1 plus omega A to the n. But this itself is not a stratum, but rather this is a union of lots of stratum. Union of stratum. And the reason I have to do this is because I want to say that so this guy has contains a unique maximal open stratum in here. And what is it cut out by? It's cut out by the condition that if you take any square matrices that are built out of square sub matrices that are built out of bottom rows, uh, the determinant of that thing is either identically zero or never zero. So you impose kind of non-vanishing condition of various determinants of sub matrices. And note that I have to take kind of bottom rows because I want this condition to be invariant under left multiplication by u. Okay, so this is, so the nature, so in this case, the non-degenerate stratum inside B minus is exactly this thing, where you have basically the maximal amount of things non-vanishing as possible. And this is the nature of this non-degenerate condition in general. Um, actually, maybe I will, well, actually, I, I was going to give another example for not neither one, but maybe I'll skip this for now. Okay, so that deals with kind of the description of the modular Fontaine Laplace model and its stratification. So, to in order to relate this to uh, kind of global information like uh, modular shear weights, I have to, uh, well, I can't just study this FL lambda on its own, I have to basically study how it interacts with various uh, TAM types. And so, let me recall some, some things. So, let me fix tower term inertia type. And what it means is that it's a representation of inertia, which can be extended to uh, the Weyl group, the Weyl group, I guess. And um, it's a finite image. And given such a data, I can, uh, like in Toby's talk, I, can, I have a modelized stack of potentially Christian representation where I fix my hot state weights to be zero and minus one on each embedding and the inertia type is tau. So the tau records kind of how far you are from actual crystalline. So tau measures this potential and the potential crystalline. So in this kind of, in the language of the Hamilton G stack, uh, this modular fontaine lafel module is nothing but an irreduced component in this stack. It's, it's what Toby called F, uh, the component labored by lambda. So let me skip the next two points for now and let me kind of draw the picture. So the picture you should keep in mind is that, so I have this moduli fontaine lapel module, which sits as an irreduced component in this, uh, in the special fiber of the MHNG stack. And inside here, for various, any kind of TAM type, you have all this potentially crystalline substacks. And as a special fiber of this, again, is a union of irreducible component. And it turns out there's a very simple way to detect that which of this chi tau contain this particular component of a lambda. So this containment happens if and only if, uh, so the shared weight I started with is a Jordan Hölder factor of sigma tau bar. So here sigma tau bar is uh, an irreducible representation of, uh, so it's an irreducible representation of GLN ZP to the, so FP to the F of the finite group. Oh no, yeah, here we go. So, the, so it's a irreducible representation of GLN FP to the F. And uh, because my type is tame, this is usually just an irreducible delin logistic representation. So yeah, so just as in Brandon's talk yesterday. So uh, as Brandon said yesterday, kind of such kind of delin logistic representation decomposed according to a generic pattern if your data is regular enough. But, and the decomposition pattern is in general very complicated. However, there are always kind of W to the F, some obvious factors that you can see. So in, in what follows, uh, I will basically be studying how this FL lambda interacts with this chi tau 
where this condition holds, and furthermore, that f lambda is just the obvious factor. So kind of this criterion follows is following from kind of our previous work uh, on, on kind of the, the study the structure of this x terms. Okay, so what is the key piece of information here? So the key piece of information is that, um, sorry, where's so yeah, so the key piece of information is, is kind of given by the following proposition. So if I have this condition that uh, F lambda occurs as the obvious factor of sigma tau bar, then what I can do is, so I guess I can write down this guy. So F L lambda is some blob in X tau, the special fiber. So this all only lives in characteristic P, I guess. Uh, this thing is kind of a larger blob and in kind of, our previous work, what we do is that we kind of give a more local model for this in terms of sub variety of some FN, plus FN flag variety. And FN flag and such sub varieties come with kind of natural stratification, say by like hyperhoric orbits. And this, and furthermore, the important point is such stratification has sort of natural interpretation in terms of the modular shear weights. And um, the basics. As information here is that if you pull the stratification on x tau that we had before to this component, what you see is exactly a translated Schubert stratification on f lambda. So note the two things: there exists exactly size w to the f uh, such taus. Since I fixed my lambda, and uh, and that should make you feel very pleasant because they are also exactly sized up due to the F translated Schubert stratification. Namely, can I just remember which translation, which element I translated by. And in fact, by kind of pulling all this uh, different stratification, so, so in other words, kind of the stratification you get when you pull back is sensitive to what tau is. And as you run over all possible taus this way, you get exactly all possible translated Schubert stratification on F lambda. And because you know how to detect for each tau which stratum you lie in based on kind of modular shear weights, in this way, uh, you prove the first part of the main theorem. You know kind of how many, well, you can just literally de detect your stratum by just start counting how many modular shear weights you have on each of these taus. Uh, I'm also drawing this picture because I want to say that the maximal stratum, the maximal uh, Schubert stratum, you get here. Uh, so I, I, I didn't explain kind of in precisely which way the stratum on x tau is controlled by shear weights, but one important piece of information that we'll use later on is that the maximum stratum is characterized by the fact that uh, as a unique uh, modular, oh, as a, sorry, as a unique modular weight in its Jordan health effect, unique modular weight. in um, Jordan held a factor of sigma tau bar. So, and kind of, at first approximation, you can think of the strat certification on this x tau you get is essentially by filtering by how many shear weights, modular shear weights you have in common with uh, my rho bar v. And the maximal one corresponds to one where you have the fewest. Okay. So this sort of explains the first part of the uh, theorem. So, I, so, Starting with this sort of discrete information of like what my set of modular shear weights are, I can extract out a discrete information about rho bar v, namely the stratum that my rho bar v lies on. Now, if I want to separate out individual rho bar v's in the stratum, I need to kind of produce uh, somehow more functions on. So, uh, the basic mechanism to do this is like uh, is basically to kind of as exactly as in the Broad Diamond strategy to kind of find enough hacker operators and, and then extract those in some way. So what hacker operators will I be working with? So I have the sigma tau, essentially a delin lustig representation before, and from this I can construct its corresponding hacker algebra. It's the endomorphism of the compact induction to GLNQP to the F of sigma tau as a GLNQP to the F representation. So this is a, a polynomial ring in at most n variable. It, it is in exactly invariable if and only if you are principal series type. And what this H sigma tau is, is, is essentially it's functions on the kind of Bernstein 
component that the type tau picks up. So for us, the helpful geometric picture is that I have this empty, this potentially crystalline stack, and I can, it's a periodic formal stack, and I can look at its uh, rigid analytic generated fiber. A point on the rigid generated fiber is nothing but a periodic, a potentially crystalline representation of uh, with inertial type tau in characteristic zero. And from this, you can attach, you can uh, extract a very lean representation. And kind of the usual kind of classical local longness correspondent essentially tells you that H sigma tau is an algebra of functions on this moduli on here. So this H sigma tau, if when I write it this way, essentially gives you like functions on the rigid analytic generic fiber of my potentially crystalline stack. Okay. The essential uh, proposition is kind of the following. So suppose that uh, F lambda, so uh, F the unique is the unique modular Jordan Hurdle factor of my uh, of my kind of type of my kind of uh, linguistic representation sigma tau bar. Then two things happen. First is that uh, kind of all this, well, I guess I, guess I, I didn't say before, but the, the UI are kind of given by kind of particular kind of double cosets. So I mean, this is not a random hacker operator, but a kind of a particular double coset operator that you usually, that are, that are familiar. So the first thing that happens is that all this particular choice of hacker operators have constant periodic evaluation. And more crucially, that it is possible to ext extract some of the leading term of this hacker operator after you normalize the factor of P away, purely representation theoretically. So the geometric uh, picture that you should have in mind is that, so I have this chi tau, and then I have this rigid genetic fiber. So, and I, my hacker algebra gives you functions on the rigid genetic fiber. So the situation, so, so not this hypothesis here, that this is a unique model, uh, there's a unique model width. So this hypothesis is guaranteed when you are somehow in the maximal stratum, as I said before. Of, so if you lie in like this maximal stratum from the maximal stratum when you pull back, the, the pullback of the maximal stratum from X tau. And so the content of, the geometric content of this proposition is that, well, if you have a sub, Sub locally closed sub variety of something and in the special fiber of X tau, uh, it gives you kind of like a rigid analytic tube on this. And the norm of the Hecker function in characteristic zero is constant on this tube. UA is constant on this tube. And furthermore, uh, in, on this tube, U, U is somehow divisible by a particular power of P. And after you kind of normalize that power of P away, you get exactly an invertible function on this. It's like invertible function on this stratum. So what is crucial here is that this statement fails completely over the entire X tau. It's only true on this tube. And it's reflected by the fact that the kind of more degenerate you are in FL lambda, you will have many more modular weights and then the mechanism we used to extract will give you an abstraction for kind of the hack operator to be, well, kind of constant valuation, so to speak. And let me also comment on uh, what the nature of this thing is. So in fact, what happens is that you will be able to more or less take this diagram to be something like the compact induction of F lambda. And then there's some mysterious compact induction. And so you have a kind of roof like this. And when you apply home to, into HL to the zero, like this becomes one of the kind of, well, in fact, both arrows will become isomorphism and then you can compose. And the result of the composition is exactly the value, the function u divided by p to the kappa. So this sort of exists. So it is exactly this proposition that allows this systematic extraction of hacker operators. And this, and, uh, and it's kind of done in a very soft way. In particular, uh, let me comment that the kind of broil diamond and kind of all the other previous kind of work that uh, write down explicit group algebra operator S and S prime, what, what do they mean from this point of view? What they really mean is that they essentially just try to write down an explicit inverse to this map. So by, what I said was that this is an arrow that's not an isomorphism in the category of smooth representation, but it's somehow an isomorphism in the 
in a localized category of smooth fermentation where you sort of annihilate all all this compact induction of non-modular weight and the, the functor home h tilde zero somehow factor factors through this localized category and and so the up operator is not divisible by p to the kappa in the usual category of smooth representation but it becomes divisible in this localized category and kind of writing down the group explicit group algebra operators like in Brian diamond and all this other work is equivalent to the problem of finding an explicit inverse to a particular natural map and of course it makes it from this perspective it's clear why it's tricky to do i mean why it's tricky to find explicit operators because there's essentially no canonical choice of such operators and so finally i think i'm ex exactly out of time so finally let me just mention that so in this way what you have is that given your robot given a stratum you can kind of go through the list of all possible types tau where the previous proposition apply and you extract out of it a kind of hacker function and so what are the nature of this bees so the nature of this bees is that uh, so i here is a matrix in u mod gln and uh, the kind of function is uh, indexed by an element of the val group in this case and a subset that's invariant under this val group element and what it looks like is that you multiply i to w you get a square matrix and this k n here means you extract the bottom uh, the bottom i guess something like n minus k minor bottom right n minus k minor in this and so you can check because i take bottom minus it's invariant under u and because i take my set s to be invariant under w this uh, element is actually invariant under conjugation action by the torus so it gives you a well defined kind of function on 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 this thing and uh I should say that the hypothesis that you are in the kind of most non-degenerate shape is the hypothesis that all the minus that you do, you see in all the bottom right minus are non-vanishing. So, uh, so if all bottom right minus minus are not zero, so even though I didn't this in FWS, I might not need to use all the bottom right minus. Uh, but I can only extract it if I know all the bottom right minus of this IW is non zero. And so, uh, given this, the problem of kind of extracting draw bar in its stratum is kind of a sort of purely linear algebra problem like this. And as I said, that's a problem we saw, can solve for the most non degenerate stratum. Uh, and we, but for the moment, it's a bit unclear whether it kind of actually works, just works for all stratum. I should say, I, uh, we are fairly convinced that. For GL4, it always works, and probably also GL5. And then the computer is still running for GL8, I guess. So, okay, I'll stop here. So, if uh, someone wants to ask, I can kind of do an explicit example for GL4 later on. But yeah, I'll stop here. Thank you very much, Bao. Let's, uh, let's thank him. And uh, please raise your hand if you have any questions. I have one question. Oh, I see. Uh, he Jung, you have a question. Uh, yeah. Could you show the the slide the main result? Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, oops, like no, the, that's one. Yeah. Yeah. So, when you say like in the, what's the meaning of the hypothesis that f lambda is in the so-called like, isn't it? about the, the f lambda is a modular servant yeah that's exactly what it means uh but like it's it cannot be removed by the uh survey conjecture for gln no because um at, at present kind of we don't know uh the weight part of shares conjecture for a non-semi-simple robot and kind of somehow ah. the, this problem here is most interesting when robot is not semi-simple I see, I see. I mean, as I said, it's automatic. I mean, if Roba is font in the files, then F lambda should automatically be a share weight because it's a geometric weight for Roba. And I should also remark on this hypothesis. You can easily kind of construct many global situations where the hypothesis applies. So the only kind of issues, and actually, in fact, it's also true that in any global setup, if you are modular with respect to any one of this weight of Roba, then this hypothesis is also true. But there's some kind of like bizarre scenario you can imagine that 
suppose there's some bad global situation where you are, uh, your starting point is uh, your modeler would respect to just some non-obvious way. And then we can't rule out that such kind of uh, global, bad global scenario. Like for semi-simple robot, we can rule this, this kind of things out, but not uh, for non-semi-simple robots. I see, thank you. Uh, my question was about the last slide. Okay. So is, are these functions supposed to be for a particular stratum? No, no, I'm, so, so this, I these I are not, lost. yeah, so, so these functions are not defined on, these are rational functions rather than, uh, these functions are not defined on the entire Fontaine Lafayette model I. Mm -hmm. It's so f f s is already defined on locus where kind of this property holds that all the bottom right minus of a w are non-zero. Uh -huh. And so what happens is that if you have a stratum, I can't speak of the function f w s unless uh, s is in the domain of f s. So only can only access kind of f w s on a stratum, there are too many s now, unfortunately, if kind of s is in the domain, mm -hmm. the definition of s. And I mean, there's the fact that it's in the domain of the definition of ws is essentially equivalent to this, uh, so it's equivalent to, to this property here. Well, actually it's exactly equivalent to this property here. Sorry, which property here? This property is that F lambda is a unique Jordan Hood. It's a unique modular Jordan Hood effect. I mean, being modular dependent on rho bar. And the stratum of rho bar, like if you fix the stratum of rho bar, you kind of already know exactly how many modular Jordan Hood effect you have for each mm -hmm. type, essentially. And then you're only allowed to use the type for which this, that intersection is has size one. Okay. And kind of from the linear algebra point of view, that just means that you you have a matrix I sitting in, in some stratum, and uh, the function that you can extract, uh, kind of you're only uh, you're only allowed to use F W S as long as uh, your matrix I satisfies this condition that all the bottom right minus of I minus of I W is non vanishing. Okay. So, so, but then you're saying you make these functions explicit for these particular strata. But these are explicit formulae, right? Right. But you're saying there's this specific condition on Perhaps the Perhaps it's most clarifying if I just did an example. Yes. So, a typical example of stratum after I kind of normalize away some non-essential factors is something like this. So like I use the tallest action to kill off a bunch of things. So there are two, it's essentially like an affine space. The fact that it's a stratum is essentially a condition that all, all, all minus you can write down are either an identity zero or non-zero. So it's a condition that x minus one, y minus one, and also x minus y is non-zero. So that's a condition for to be a stratum. So uh, how can I extract x and y out of this? So, if I take W to be like one four and my set is one comma four, what happens? So I W, so, so, so my, my row bar will be something in here and I need to somehow extract X and Y from my hacker function. So I times W means I swap uh, column one and column, I think I get this. And I take one comma four, so that means I take the determinant. Sorry, what is the definition of W? W is an element of a Y group. Right. Uh, it's a transposition, one and four. No, what was the significance of W? Well, just, it enters in the formula for the Hecker function. The, the data of the Hecker function requires okay. an element of W and an, a subset fixed under it. Okay. It's stabilized by it. And so if I take this set, the kind of Hecker function I get is, so I take the entire determinant, so that's just one. Then I take the determinant of the bottom right three by three minor, so that's one zero x one zero one 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 y, and I take the bottom four by four. So that's just y, and then divide by one the empty 
matrix is determined one. So I get exactly y over um, like one minus x, I guess. And so, uh, so as you see, like typically the hacker functions are kind of like rational functions of this nature. And uh, if you write down a kind of wrong W and S, like you might just get expressions that looks like zero over zero, basically. And so like, the, mm -hmm. like so, so you, you can't take a random W and S and get a, a meaningful function. And, but what, what the claim is that for any stratum, you can just write down all, all the possible Hacker functions that are defined on the stratum, and then uh, those are enough to kind of separate out all the points of the stratum among themselves. So, so what, perhaps like what's worth noting here is that the collection fun of function you use is highly sensitive to which stratum you started with. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, yeah, that's that's perhaps the way to put it. Thank you. And so, yes, yeah, so, and if you want to, you can have tests that if you use two one tree and two four, and S is, I guess, any would work. S one tree, you can extract another function that looks kind of like different from this, and these two functions will separate out. We will com completely determine X and Y. So. Thank you. Are there any other questions right now? If not, um, the video can stop now and we let's think about